America, my name is Amir Sir Fimpong. I come to you live every Thursday. And I try to do a special show on Mondays where I just give a little bit of free game. And the game is worth exactly as much as you paid for it, which is nothing. Um, so you can take it or leave it. But I'm just saying, for this episode, uh, we're going to talk about why you really shouldn't date a girl who's looking at your pocket. Or cares how much you make. It's well known that guys, for the most part, don't care like how much money women have. Like... Most guys, more than anything, like as in character wise, just don't care. They they have other things on their mind. They might care if she's pretty. They might care if she has good habits. They're looking to marry her. If they're like me, they're, they're, they care if she like can collaborate in raising wonderful kids. Like those are the kinds of things. They don't care how much money she makes. Um, and you should expect also for the women to not care how much money you make. Now. This is going to be controversial because there's this notion that, well, you know, men are supposed to provide and, and, and all of that stuff. I think that's kind of not true. Um, it's inappropriate, not only in the 21st century, but it's just fundamentally dubious because, um, you know, you, you're saying, like, do you trust someone else to have unilateral authority over your kids? while you go tame the world and bring them money for them to raise your kids. I don't trust anybody to raise me. I want to have uh, a, a substantial part in raising, in the activity of raising my kids. That's not something I do something else. Like, so the idea, the idea is that, oh, this, this wife will also cook and clean for you and provide sex. I'm like, well, in theory, a lot of that other stuff can get hired out, right? Like, I shouldn't be able to replace a wife with like five different different workers. <laughs> that's not that's not what you're there for. Someone who like you enjoy collaborating with, and someone with whom you can do you could you could raise, um, be in and raise a family with. Not so much someone who's going to like well uh, just do all of these jobs themselves, right? So anyone who's looking for you to pay her in order for her to then do all of this work isn't really looking for one to, to do the work of a family and two is, is looking for, you know, a very kind of particular variety of prostitute. And, you know, I'm not saying that people seeking the stay at home mom life are necessarily prostitutes, but if that's their, like, if that's their motivation, like they're not not prostitutes it's just a variety of prostitution that, <laughs> that they are they are with you for your money <laughs> like it's just a variety of prostitution that's socially acceptable and uh, you can't be so i don't i wouldn't trust any of these people anybody who's looking at my wallet isn't going to make the greatest wife because they're going to raise little girls who themselves are gold diggers and and then sons who are kind of jerks because they're going to like have a hard time appreciating. It's like I would have a hard time taking those women um, seriously. Now, I'm not against stay-at-home spouses. I actually think that's fine. I'm against that being an aspiration as opposed to something that's just kind of worked out. Um, yeah. But you have to understand I'm one of these guys who doesn't assume that Women have a harder time in the, on the workforce and doesn't assume that um, men are the worst parents. I think, you know, <laughs> I, I think we underestimate how important fathers are in a lot of, a lot of ways, like actual like, substantive fathers, especially in terms of like raising kids to who then go out and can be meaningful in the world. It's not enough to just cook and clean and have them be clean. You got to actually give them a quality of character that can get them to kind of fight for their cut in the world and carve out a, a, a place for meaning. And, you know, if you don't know how to do that as, and, and be like actually effective, and if you don't know how to do that and all you know how to do is you know, cook and clean and give sex, then you're going to raise someone who just knows how to cook and clean and give sex. So I'm, I'm just not convinced. We have this notion, we've naturalized motherhood in a way that we assume mothers know what they're doing and they don't know what they're doing any more than any other parent. And fathers, they, nobody expects them to uh, um, immediately know what they're doing. In fact, as providers, they, 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 they were saying that they don't know what they're doing and shouldn't even have to learn, just write the check 
over to uh, the the spouse who's going to actually raise the kids. Like I just wouldn't. That that doesn't make sense. So any father who's actually raising kids would have to have like actually thought about it in a way that a lot of women who raise kids don't think. They just kind of naturally assume that because they're women, they know what to do. And it turns out they don't know what to do, and then their kids end up screw ups. And since it's America, we blame everyone else except. <laughs> the mother for kids being screw ups but I, I i blame the mother and i think you should too by the way if you appreciate um what i do here especially blaming mothers go over it to www.funkyacademic.com and kick in five fifteen fifty dollars a month so i keep doing what i'm doing because you're getting a quality of wisdom here that you don't always get other places like we know like i am i'm not necessarily anti-sex work i think it could be a well-regulated service but i also am not one of those people who thinks that the aspiration to be taken care of by a guy um, is different than sex work. <laughs> like, so I, 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 it's not fundamentally different. If you're not, yeah, so just be very careful of, of women who are looking at your pocket. I don't expect you to like handle the financial burden because when that doesn't happen, they'll just divorce. Look, divorce rates are high. So you got to figure out like what's causing divorce rates and women are filing for them. And you just got to think of that. And are you really going to do whatever it takes to get money if that keeps you away from your kids? I mean, actually raising your kids. Like you work all this, you work so hard that you don't get to then raise your kids. And you put that off on somebody else. Like that's, that's unacceptable to me. So I would be very suspicious of any woman who tells you that all they need from you is to, for you to make money and they'll take care of the home, which includes raising the kids, because they might not be very good at raising the kids. And then you're going to have to do both. <laughs> they don't talk about the male double day where the guy's got to go out and work and then come back and make sure that, you know, the women don't screw up the kids. Uh, the double day is this idea that women have to work outside of the home, then come home and do all the work inside the home. Well, but there's, there's the male equivalent of the guy working outside the home, then coming home and like having to you know, mind to uh, the way, you know, the wife might be screwing up the kids or like not doing the job there because that's actually a hard job. And so think about the varieties of double days going around, but really raising kids isn't really a 50-50 type of thing. It's 100-100. Everyone's got to do all of the things. And if you find someone who thinks that like you don't have to do your part, <laughs> then um, if they can just pay you, they can just pay and to get out of like the, the job of parenthood, they can just pay one spouse to do all the parenting. That is, that's not someone you want to be with, right? So there isn't really a, and that's probably someone that's not particularly competent at parenting because real parents know that you would need both parents. Any parent who thinks that they can do it on their own isn't a very good parent because like, like, the competent parents would know that it's easier with two. Two actual parents, not one person providing and the other person doing all the, like, rearing. Like, two actual people doing the rearing is the best. And so if you date someone who, like, just is functionally can work a job and make enough money just by making a job, they don't have to... You guys can figure out how to make it work together. All right, so date someone who's not a complete bum, someone who can and knows how to work and knows that like working is hard. Um, but if two people get together and they both can work, it doesn't really matter how much any one of them makes for a good relationship. They can work that out because part of what it is to be in a good relationship is to work that out. And anyone who doesn't get that, just don't go with them. Anyone who expects you to like go out and earn and take care of the whole thing while they just stay at home and do all of that. That's like not someone you want to be with because they're just a variety of prostitutes. If that's their aspiration, unless they're very good and like not just cooking clean and very good at the cultural aspect of raising kids, like to a science and like they're committed to like do not just home because people homeschool and they do it badly, right? They, they are actually come. They actually have the cultural background to like, do the full-time child care like super well and it to an exceeding degree like so much that it's like it could be a job then then that person might not just be a prostitute looking for you 
looking for a check. But anybody short of that, they're just a variety of prostitutes looking for an easy life. Easy life, and they're not going to be particularly good raising their kids, right? So, and like the whole marriage then is held together by external factors outside of both people's character. It's 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 held by your ability to earn, or and <laughs> and they actually have no accountability at all for their part. They could be screw ups as mothers, and uh, and 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 still, I don't know, maybe even divorce you and take half. So. I'm just telling you right now, be very suspicious of anyone who expects, of dating someone who expects you to earn more than they do. They should just expect you to earn whatever. Like they should expect you like basic functionality in civil society. Um, if they expect you to take care of them, you're just dating a prostitute anyway. Um, now it might work out that you go to one salary or like that's, what, but like anyone who thinks that that's like their aspiration is like aspiring to be an infant infantilized in a way that's i find unbecoming and i think you should be wary of for a variety of reasons mostly because i just don't think those people make the best parents um i i i don't think and yeah and it's going to be hard to respect someone who's only with you for your money i don't even like sleeping people like i, I one of the one of the reasons why i can be like pro sex work in general for like other people but like not really for me is i wouldn't want to sleep with anyone who didn't like me for like who only was with me for my money it, it, like my money's internal uh, external to who i am in a way especially a person of the mind like some could say that i am um i, I i'm not really like, i don't mind if they're using me for my body but like i'm, I'm really uncomfortable with someone using me for you know material if they because because they think I'm an earner. So I've never like actually portrayed myself as like, you should be with me because I earn and I'm going to take care of you. No, I don't. That's not, that was, that was never my shtick. That was my move. That was never my move. And just like I said, guys don't care about how much money their, their girls make. The girls shouldn't really care about how much money their guys make, but both should care that they can stay fit. After this, I go and run. Then I go pick up my kids from school and uh, have a wonderful evening. And like, so just be very careful. And I say this because I was, you know, I was watching this video and in the video, it's a bunch of guys from Miami. They're like, well, you know, you have to kind of like show them that you can earn. So you need like the fancy car and the nice dress and all that stuff. I'm just, and I'm just thinking any girl that you need to impress with stuff isn't just, it's not for you or it's not for me. <laughs> Any girl that you need to impress with stuff or is going to be impressed with stuff is just as easily going to be depressed without stuff. And you don't want someone who's depressed without stuff. So I'm just saying that any girl you have to kind of woo that way with stuff and, you know, the illusion that you're going to be a baller is probably functionally broken. Like there's something she can't, like I, I, I wouldn't trust him. I wouldn't trust him. For anything that matters, and like moving into my house and being with me in a meaningful way is uh, that matters. Now, I almost did this show on Jonathan Majors because you know he got caught a case, um, but I think I'll do I'll do a different show on the dangers <laughs> of dating, the dangers of dating. Maybe I'll do a, the dangers of dating white women. But I think this is just women in general. Um, Jonathan Majors, if you don't know, was arrested. And, uh, you know, I read these articles. They're like, well, you know, she was peeking on his phone and then he grabbed her arm and then threatened to choke her. And I'm just thinking, well, that's, that's quote what the TMD article and Black Star article and all these articles said. She was peeking on his phone and he grabbed his, her arm. And I'm thinking, was she peeking on his, peeking on his phone means like looking over. So what, what she was doing, if he's grabbing her arm, was she wasn't peeking on his phone. She wasn't, she, she wasn't looking over. She was snatching. <laughs> and if you snatch, like, I don't know. I, there's a reason I teach my kids not to snatch. It doesn't feel good to get snatched from. So, uh, like, if she was snatching, you kind of get what you get. <laughs> don't snatch. I'm just saying. So, the, you go to the videos, and they, uh, you go to the, the articles about it, and they say she was peeking on his phone, and then he grabbed her arm. And, but peeking is something you do with your look. If it involves hands, you weren't peeking, you were snatching. And I bet you this was 
because she recanted as soon as they found out there's video evidence of it all. So I bet you this was all just kind of drummed up. Um, and she kind of went to the police the day after. And, and so, uh, you know, that's one of those deals where white women call their white lady friends and <laughs> the, the team decides that she was abused and, and a black guy gets arrested. And that's, that's, that's life for a lot of people. But, you know, since we don't arrest, we don't arrest white women for anything. <laughs> like it's, it's pretty hard to get it out. Yeah, I'll do a show on this next week. And that'll be my free game, like the dangers of, 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 of dating white women. Since we don't arrest them for anything, they have no kind of compunction about what it is to involve the police. Yeah. So anyway, thank you for your time. That's, that's not just white women. That's, we don't arrest women, but like white women, we really, you, gotta, you can have to like do cocaine from an officer's badge while like reaching for his gun to get arrested for a white woman, which is why a lot of the white women in prison did it. They just did it. <laughs> there was no, like, I was in the wrong time, wrong place. Now you did it. Um, but I'll let you go. If you appreciate what I'm doing, go to www.funkyacademic.com, kick in five, fifteen, fifty dollars $50 a month, and I'll keep doing it. And, you know, subscribe if you like the video. And I will see you next week. <laughs>